For the sake of younger years and proactive minds, certain words have been watered into the term ice cream and ice cream eating. In a world as big as ours, there's a lot of beauty to be found in it. You look to the left, you see the trees, you look up, you see the clouds, right? It's a lot of beautiful things in the world. Take the beaches of Gambia, for example. The picturesque destination has a lot to offer. Many tourists are often left fulfilled with the experiences, right? You also get to meet new people. And if you're lucky, maybe you fall in love with a local woman who might turn out to be the love of your life. But I have to ask, is it really all this colorful? Everything I've just described, it sounds like it came straight out of a Hollywood movie, right? But what if I tell you that what's hidden behind all of this beauty is a side of tourism you might never expect. Possibly a side which you never, never, never considered before. A side that sees STDs. A side that sees cheating rampant. I leave the husbands in the UK, come here and have fun with a black man, and then go back to the husband in the UK, yeah. And a side of heartbreak, leaving many people in over their heads in dangerous situations. What am I talking about? Well, let's look at the bumpsters of Gambia. Imagine yourself on Kotsu Beach, all relaxed, you're probably wearing palm print shirts, you have a shade on, and you're staring at the beautiful setting sun. A couple passes in front of you. It's a young local and a white woman who's probably old enough to be his mother. You might remove your shades and stare at that scene for a while before probably brushing it off as just luck on the woman's side. She's bagged herself a younger guy, right? That's what you're thinking. At that moment, you see, you weren't exactly wrong to have viewed them in that way, right? But there's an unspoken dynamic between those couples you just saw. A dynamic that sees the local being termed as a bumpster. By definition, a bumpster is someone that's known as a beach boy, who is typically a young man that is a member of the host community. This person frequently hangs around tourist areas and they pretty much prop the older woman up like a mechanic and they change her oil if you get what i'm talking about <laughs> for these bumpsters their ideal target as you may have guessed from the couple you seen earlier, is older woman. Many of these crusty old women travel to Africa from the West in search of beach boys to date and pay for sex. Excitement. Yes, the excitement. Mm -hmm. Let's go for some fun. The truth is that most of these young guys, they don't even like these crusty old women and they're pretty much just doing it for money. But why would anybody want to be a bumpster in the first place? I mean, in the name itself, it seems like it was coined from the word bum and dumpsters. But like most things, right? You've got to look at the economics behind it, right? Many of these beach boys that you're seeing are dropouts who stopped schooling because they believe that being bumpsters pay more than an average job. I've seen a lot of white women, older white women with young, young Gambian guys out here. I know what the Gambian boys are up to. Better way of living, because mm -hmm. all of them are living not so good in a room, no cupboards, just a bed, nothing. So if they can find a woman that they can, all a woman wants is love and they can give them love, they're gonna do it. They're just looking for a way out. I mean, all you've got to do is see the size of their customer base to understand how much money these guys are making. If you know anything about Jamaica, you know that there's never a shortage of crusty old women along the shorelines of Jamaica. In Jamaica, for example, the men have developed a reputation for being able to keep going for an hour. Someone who went on a Jamaican trip said this, on weekends we had off, so we'd go to the beach and these young men would walk up and down the beach, they'd do push-ups, they'd show off their muscles trying to woo us. You'd see them with these old hag women at restaurants and shops. It was so bizarre. So far, we've seen a side of tourism that we never usually see. But what about the people who frequent these tourist areas? What about the women that go? How about we take a closer look at the deluding culture of hedonism? 
Hedonism is a movement that began in the 5th century BCE when Aristippus, a hipster, sorry, a philosopher, began to advocate for a life full of sensual pleasure. He maintained that the greatest good in his life was the pleasure of the moment. In modern day Jamaica, there is a resort dedicated to the teachings of our wise hipster. We get a good glimpse of this resort from the story of a woman who goes to this pleasure resort located in Negril, Jamaica. It turns out this resort was actually built by the Jamaican government, meaning that whatever goes on in this resort is entirely legal. Come on, get up. I'm just get up. Job, Come on, what are you doing, lady? This how you doing it? What's wrong with it? He said that it comes with it. That's why everybody does oh, when it comes to Jamaica. No, oh, my friend. Come on. You see that he ain't had to smack too. it. You get one too. No, what? Well, man, I don't want no massage from him. You get one too. Come on. I seen the slap. I get the can rub. I, can I, you have a female to do for him? Yeah, I'm going to show my friend. You want a girl to come and do it? Yeah. And a lot does go on in these resorts. Some of these things this woman experienced in her time were full frontal nightly swinger parties and many more levels of depravity. It wasn't uncommon to see an all girl action going down in the room next to yours. After all, many hedonist centers like hedonism too are gender insensitive. One can always find love in any gender he desires. And if that wasn't wild enough, right? Many people as young as 19 are encouraged to try out this resort and almost advertise to them like it is the new arcade that is down the block. Married couples are swapping with other people to do things. They're doing some Sneeko stuff. They're doing some Adam 22 stuff. Well, let me tell you, don't go to hedonism in Jamaica because that's a swingers resort and you'll be sitting by the What's pool. It it's a hedonism. It's a swingers resort mm. and you'll be sitting with your wife and a man will politely come up and say, hey, could I f*** your wife or could you f*** my wife? And with mm. a lot of 10 inch on your wife and you got the regular. Mm. No, man. they don't got to pull it out because you can't wear clothes back there. So you can't bring your phones and you can't wear no clothing. It's a sign. Been there before? Yeah. You have fun in there before? Yeah. Oh my God, let's talk about that. And you had in it before? I did, I did, I did. And we see some even revisiting these censors claiming that they never miss a year. Quite the way to keep the love burning in a relationship. So I'm super nervous. I can't imagine but if I meet someone cute, I would love it. just feels like it's going to be a really straight experience. And I'm like not in a very straight mood. Greetings from Jamaica. I am currently in Negril, Jamaica at Hedonism 2, which is a clothing optional swingers resort to be completely honest i was extremely nervous walking into this place didn't really know what to expect all i knew was that people might approach me to have with me and i was gonna see a lot of people so far nobody has approached me but probably because i'm very standoffish and cold so people don't feel comfortable approaching me research reveals that most women are likely to use protection when partaking in hedonist practices Going back to Gambia, many of the old crusty women we talked about are more than happy to engage in unprotected action with these beach boys than with their spouses at home. After all, they get paid good money and they want to enjoy the feel. Per their words, it isn't every time they get to moist with someone who isn't their husband who can last more than 10 minutes. A man named Stanley Gottlieb alleges that the women do things here that they would never do at home. They eat the ice cream without the plastic. They walk along the beach drunk and get into cars on their own. As you can see, a lot of crazy things are going on in these hedonist centers, right? And by men and women who believe in a hedonist lifestyle, what if the high of these resorts isn't really good enough for you? Then what do you do? Exclusive Love Cloud Charter Jets. There's something called Exclusive Love Charter Jets. And this is how far people can go for pleasure. Here, thirsty Mao Hai clubbers charter a love jet at a cost. They charter this jet to have their thirst quench exclusively. Mile High Club and don't risk getting caught. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, a new service is offering flights just for at 30,000 feet. Love Cloud, that's what the new jet service out of Las Vegas is called. It offers a 40 minute flight over Sin City to commit a few sins of your own. The aircraft is a Cessna 421 dubbed the Golden Eagle, redesigned with a custom made foam bed for lovemaking at the highest altitudes. And as you can imagine, most of these swingers also eat the ice cream without the plastic on. 
While the pilot glides through the clouds, passengers are getting frisky in the back, trying to get full value for the $995 that they paid for 45 minutes. For those with deeper pockets and even longer thirst spells, they could get a good 90 minutes up in the air for $1,495. And you're probably wondering, how is the pilot able to fly the plane in the midst of these ice cream eating stuff that's going on? Well, for his freedom and comfort, the pilot gets to put on noise canceling headphones with curtains blocking his view. According to the pilot, some of these passengers are people who with themselves after they get cheated on by their spouse, newlywed people, and people who just can't get enough of the experience and book a time extension. There is a lot of crazy, down bad stuff going on in our society. A lot of people would do anything to satisfy their never ending pleasure cravings. And because of this, we have to take a look at the global market of tourism. Beyond Gambia and Jamaica, there are many tourism destinations with very much darker sides. Cuba, for example, has a long history of tourism, with its most popular venue being none other than the famous Havana. On this tropical island, it isn't uncommon for you to come across many geniteras who are pimped out to tourists. By the way, the escorts are called geniteras. For these geniteras, prostitution is unfortunately their way of survival in a system that has failed them. Similar cases can be seen in places like Sosua Beach in Dominican Republic, where prostitution is legal, encouraging many women to engage in ice cream eating practices for cash. As we've seen comprehensively in this video, a lot of things can go wrong in tourism, especially in places like this where the man holds the financial power. What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Bonita. Who? Bonita. Bonita. So far, we've covered tourism and the risk involved. Now, what about the darker consequences of this? How much deeper can we go down this rabbit hole? I think it's time we take a trip into the darker side of tourism in Jamaica. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the mental health of many of the parties that are involved in all of this can be at risk. These beach boys are drooled on by older tourist women, with people treating the issue as a cheap laugh. This is why many of these cases involving beach boys being exploited do not get the same coverage compared to cases where women are the ones being exploited. As you can imagine, such a lack of care by society for these beach boys can leave many of them feeling worthless. <laughs> Come marry with me if you want, you don't have to ask your family. No, 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 they no. say all my girlfriends who are married with black men. No, 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 but here when you want to marry it, and you hate my family. I don't hate your family no, but before, but now no. I don't want because they, they are, it's criminal to say yeah. you have to pay house, you no, have no, no, to pay no. house. You have the and you it's a crime. Family. Of course, I am not a shit brat. Because I have paid your your water bill to eight thousand dollars, and I do you think I hate your family then? Oh, no. But now I now I don't want to speak with you because you are asking me the very nasty way buy the house, buy the house, buy the car, and then they say he can't marry with you. In some cultures, like in Jamaica, it is taboo for a man to engage in ice cream eating with his mouth. Unfortunately. Many of these men are left with little choice but to engage in it for as little as a hot meal and a place to sleep. Also, the high frequency of unprotected ice cream eating in these regions has led to HIV AIDS becoming sporadic among the Beach Boys, with 20,000 adults and children of the Jamaican population living with HIV and AIDS. The Ministry of Health recently reported to the UN that nearly one in three young gay men in Jamaica is HIV positive. This is 20 times higher than in the rest of the population. Yeah, which is the sad thing that happens when you eat ice cream without the plastic on. Through many of these examples, we see the role poverty and negligence plays in tourism. It's no wonder developing countries are the ones that are dealing with this majorly, right? As for the female tourists in Gambia and Jamaica, 
Many of them get heartbroken sometimes from being emotionally attached after the marathon ice cream eating. According to one report, the women are left wondering what's going on. Sometimes the men stink, but the women like that. In fact, they actually ignore it. Sometimes they wonder why these men are no longer interested in them feeling them to feel that their vulnerability has been exploited by these beach boys. In some extreme cases, many of these female tourists decide to move to Jamaica to start a life with the beach boys. And as you can guess, this is when things change for the worst, as many find themselves in extremely abusive relationship with the very men who treated them like queens when they first met. Andrea Johnson, a Negro police, would say that the relationship ends up sour and we have to intervene. I've seen some nasty domestic violence towards the white women who move in with their boyfriends. The men sometimes steal from the women or beat them when they run out of money. In one story, a victim, Carrie, who found herself not being much attractive to men back home, she gave up her job, moved to Jamaica, and died abused by these men. Many of these beach boys often have wives who they've gotten pregnant only to abandon them with babies and go on about their bumpster activities. This just shows the thought process of a good number of these beach boys. For them, it's a numbers game. Nothing else matters but to hit it. The ultimate goal of these bumpsters is to have themselves flown out of abject poverty by these old crusty women filling visa applications for them. So what would this say about the men and women who are wrapped up into this tourism game? Conclusion Well, for many of these beach boys, prostitutes, and pimps, it is simply business. They take extra care to ensure this truth is kept secret from the tourists whom they've convinced that it's just beyond the money. As for the tourists themselves, most don't see themselves as predators, with many holding the beliefs that they're simply helping out. They see themselves often as white knights who, thanks to their financial muscles, are able to save these poor local guys from their harsh situation at a price. In the end, it is all a delusion and a house of cards that often comes tumbling at the slightest breeze. Tourism says a lot about our society and how much we have allowed degeneracy and exploitation to become normalized. It has gone to the point where men don't need to stress themselves with the logistics of the whole affair, resulting in a culture of male order brides that have seen thousands of women exploited and abused. In deeper, more sinister setups, human trafficking rings have ensured a never-ending supply of prostitutes for the rich and powerful to abuse. The sad part about all of this is that despite everything that we've covered, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the issue. What we can say at this juncture is that we live in a complex world that is full of twists and surprises. So next time you're on vacation in all the parts of the world and you see a crusty old woman prancing and walking around the beach with her beach boy, keep an eye out, they might be eating ice cream.